This is the video lesson for Unit 6, Homework 4, Interpreting Probability Tables. The learning target for this lesson is, I can calculate the probability for a chance experiment that does not have equally likely outcomes. That's what we're working on today. So we previously looked at chance experiments where all the outcomes are, have the same probability. Today, that won't be true. Please watch the video posted to Google Classroom, then follow along and complete the worksheet. Anything you see written on your screen, you should also write down. Here's our situation. Over the course of her school career, Alexandra has been collecting data on the frequency of snow days occurring based on day of the week. Her data is shown below. She knows there was at least one snow day last week, but she cannot remember on which day or days it occurred. So let's look at our table. On the top, we've got the day of the week, and on the bottom, we've got the probability of there being a snow day. So let's just take a second and analyze this data. First of all, we could consider these probabilities, which are given as decimals, as either fractions or percents. For now, let's just convert them to percents so we can talk about them that way. So 0.2, that means 20%. Got another 0.2 for Tuesday, it's another 20%. Point 0.1, that's 10% for Wednesday. Point 0.4, that's 40% for Thursday, meaning of all the snow days in her career, 40% of them happen to be on Thursdays. And Friday, that's 1%, point 0.1, that's 10%. Let's just take a moment to notice that all of these snow days, if I take all these probabilities and add them up, they're going to add to 100%, all right? So just to confirm, 20% plus another 20% is 40%, plus another 10% is 50%, plus 40% is 90%, plus another 10% is 100%. And that's because Monday through Friday, these are all all of the possible days where they could have had a snow day, right? There are seven days in a week, but only five of them have you going to school. So 100% of the time, it's going to be on one of these days. And then we break it up further to look at what's the likelihood that it's on any given day. So let's use this table to answer the following questions. One says, what is the probability that the snow day was on Wednesday? So based on the data that Alexandra has collected, there's a 10% chance that the snow day was on Wednesday because 10% of the snow days that she's recorded have been on Wednesdays. Number two asks, what is the probability that the snow day was not on Wednesday? There are two ways we could figure this out. We could say, hey, I know 100% of the snow days were Monday through Friday, and I'm thinking about the ones that were not on Wednesday. So I can take away 10% of those. And if I take 100% minus 10%, I know that there must be a 90% chance that the snow day was not on Wednesday. That's one way I could think about it. The other way that I could think about it is I could say, hey, if it wasn't on Wednesday, it might have been on Monday, and there was a 20% chance of that. Or it might have been on Tuesday, and there was also a 20% chance of that. Not Wednesday, but it could have been on Thursday. There's a 40% chance of that one. It also could have been on Friday, and there's a 10% chance of that. And if I add up these values, 20 plus 20 is 40%, plus another 40% is 80%, plus 10% is 90%. So either way, I end up determining that there's a 90% chance that the snow day did not occur on Wednesday. Number three asks, what is the probability that the snow day was on Wednesday or later in the week? So now we have to look at not just Wednesday, but Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So let's see, Wednesday, there was a 10% chance of a snow day. Thursday, there was a 40% chance of a snow day. Friday, there was a 10% chance of a snow day. If I add these up, that tells me that there was a 60% chance that the snow day was on Wednesday or later. 
Read carefully for number four. Four says, what is the probability that the snow day was after Wednesday? So this is slightly different from number three because we're not including Wednesday. After Wednesday would just be Thursday or Friday. So I would calculate this by taking 40% of it occurring, the chance of it occurring on Thursday, and then adding that to 10%, which is the chance of the snow day occurring on Friday, for a total of a 50% chance of the snow day occurring after Wednesday. Just as a quick aside, if you're wondering why I'm allowed to add these percents, it's because we're using the same whole the whole time. So our 100% in this scenario represents all five days of the week. So since I have the same whole for all of these scenarios, that's why I'm allowed to just add percents. Remember that if we do not have the same whole, we cannot just add the percent numbers. Number five asks, add the probabilities together. What do you notice and what does that mean? If you were paying close attention to this video, I've already answered number five. So I'd like you to answer it in your own words, please. If you're not sure, Go back and rewatch the beginning of this video, and you should be able to answer this on your own. Make sure you've answered number five on your own. Let's take a look at the back together. The diagram below shows a spinner designed like the face of a clock. So there are 12 sections. The sectors of the spinner are colored red, blue, green, and yellow. So let's take a look. We've got one of these 12 sections is red. One of these 12 sections, or sorry, two of those 12 sections are blue. We've got a bunch of these 12 sections that are green. Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five sections that are green. And the remaining ones are yellow. One, two, three, four. Number six says, complete the table of probabilities below. So it will be easiest to start with these as fractions, but once we have them down as fractions, we may want to give them as percents or decimals. For now, let's write them as fractions. The probability of getting red on this spinner, well, there is one section that's red out of 12 total sections, so that would be 1 12. If you'd like this number as a decimal or a percentage, <clears throat> you can feel free to check that on your calculator by taking 1 divided by 12, and you'll get 0 0.083 repeating, which is about 8.3%. Let's look at the blue sections next. There are two blue sections out of 12 sections altogether, so that will be 2 out of 12 sections, meaning the probability is 2 out of 12. But anytime we have a fraction, we should give it in simplest form. So we could represent this probability as one-sixth. If you wanted to give that number as a decimal, take one divided by six on your calculator, that will give you 0 0.16 repeating. As a percentage, that would be about 16.7%. There are one, two, three, four, five green sections. So that means that the probability of landing on green would be 5 out of 12, because there are 12 sections total. 5 out of 12 can't be simplified, but we know that by dividing 5 by 12, we'll find that the likelihood of landing on green is 0 0.416666 repeating, or in other words, 41.7% roughly. And last but not least, we have our yellow section. Please pause the video right now and figure out what the yellow probability is on your own. When you're done, resume the video to check your answer. There are four yellow sections out of 12 sections total. If we simplify that fraction, we'll get one third, which means that 0 0.3 repeating, or about 33.3% .3 of the time, we should expect to land on yellow. I'm gonna leave you to try the rest of this worksheet on your own. For seven, we're finding the probability that the pointer stops in either the blue or green region. We'll need to add the blue and green probabilities. Do that on your own, please. For number eight, you'll need to find the probability that the pointer does not stop in the green region. You should be able to figure this out based on what we did before. Finish the worksheet on your own.